Tuesday. We're back at it for more local TV. It's the 23rd day of June, 2020. This is Wake Up in Anchi Valley. I'm Dan Kuntz, your host. Going to be a hot one in the old town tonight. Woke up at 4 o'clock in the morning. That's when I get up Monday through Friday. I get up at 4. You kind of have to. It's a morning show. That's the nature of the beast. And it was 70 degrees. 70 degrees. Dropped down a couple. Went down about 68 degrees uh, right before sunrise. That's usually what happens. And then it's starting to climb again. We are already at 71 degrees outside of our studio. So we're 10 degrees warmer at this time than we were 24 hours ago, which means we could very well get into triple digits. We're certainly going to be in the upper 90s. Warmest day of the year uh, so far, without question. We hit 89 yesterday, which is just about the predicted high. They said right around 90 or 91. Is there a real difference between 91 and 89? I think not. It was, it was certainly warm. Uh, but we're going to have the hottest day of the year so far. Then a bit of a cool down. In fact, I'm a little concerned about what's going to happen later on tonight into Wednesday because there's going to be a cool front coming through. It's, it's not particularly strong, but it's going to pick the winds up a little bit. And when we need combined warm temperatures, early summer conditions, and wind, well, you know what that means. It's a bad combination. Forecast details are coming up. we got news. we got sports. The obscure holiday today in history. Some celebrity birthdays. Everyone's entitled to Mike McNally's opinion. And because we had such a wonderful time shooting a special uh, interview with Bonnie Orr, a conversation with the Dirt Diva, we did it last week. We aired it on Friday. We want to air it again today because, first of all, it was good to get out and about. We filmed it uh, out of studio because it's Bonnie. It's about garden and, and yard and things like that and how to make sure your yard and garden has a good and safe and a healthy summertime during the heat of the year. So we're going to replay that uh, coming back in the back half of the hour. It's a couple minutes uh, after the hour. Let's start our day with our tour. Let's take you around North Central Washington with our cameras. Just a couple of high clouds to the north of us. And as I mentioned before, it's going to be sunny. It's going to be hot. It's going to be dry. Uh, the water will be quite enticing indeed, but it's still pretty high down at Walla Walla Point Park and Confluence Park. Is the, you know, That's all the stuff that's up in British Columbia. It's still melting snow up there. So Columbia is uh, running high and running cold and of course all the public pools for the most part are closed if you have a friend with a private pool see if they have memberships uh, that's zoomed in a little bit I believe our cross camera normally it's a little bit farther out but it's zoomed in uh, so we have a very nice view of the sunny slope area as we say good morning to the Wenatchee Valley and you can see where the where the Wenatchee River enters into the Columbia River you can see it's still running pretty high pretty high indeed Camera number two, I don't know, Megan gets to decide. We're gonna pay a visit to um, the Black uh, Help me out, Megan. That's the Apple Andy's camera, she moved it on me. I was so used, whenever we do the Apple Andy's camera, I'm so used to seeing cashmere, that to have them move the camera, it always discombobulates me. So I think she's moved that a little bit to the southeast towards the Wenatchee Valley. I'm just spitballing here, but that's what it looks like to me. Uh, so the Apollonius camera pointing maybe a little bit towards the monitor area, the monitor heights area, if there is such a thing. As we say good morning to our friends just to the northwest of us, only about six or seven miles. No big difference there. As you can see, if you look to the south, there's quite a bit of, well, there's all clear skies that the closet you saw from the cross cameras to the north of us, and they're not going to last very long. Camera number three is the Rondo Rock camera. See, that's a no-brainer. Pulled all the way back. Beautiful view of Lake Antiat. And of course, Lake Antiat isn't really a lake. It's the reservoir behind Rocky Reach Dam, but they call it Lake Antiat for reasons unknown. In any event, it looks like a lake, even though it's a river. That's a beautiful view. And of course, traffic is still pretty heavy, as you can tell, on uh, US 97 Highway 2, the combined highway on the Douglas County side of the Columbia River, because you're still doing slope stabilization work on 97A on the west side near the Napsil Tunnel. So that's the way you want to do if you want to head up to Chelan or vice versa. You want to be on the east side of the river. And camera number four. It is off to see. Wow, look at that. Is that the Omi Gardens camera? Why does it look so, it looks so cool. <laughs> it must be just the angle of the sun. I don't think we added a filter there. That's a neat view. I want to swat those bugs out of the way. The Otabashian Bridge, uh, and again, you can see the Columbia River a little on the high side. It'll slowly, of course, start drying itself down a little bit. It's kind of strange. Of course, we have all these dams now. Well, they can kind of control the height of the Columbia River and the flow of the Columbia River. Messing with Mother Nature and straight across 
on the other side of your screen is the uh, cross camera at the very tip of the one at you. That's a cool view. It must just be the angle of the sun, even though the sun has been up for over two hours. Sunrise this morning at 5.05, sunset at 9.02, 15 hours and 57 minutes of daylight. Get that stuff out of there. <laughs> Somebody bring me the off. That's a cool view. Good work, Megan. I like that one. But what is that? Is that, are that? is that bugs or is that the camera? I think that's bugs. Wow. Should we? Do, I wonder what. I wonder what it is around the camera that is attracting the bugs. That's pretty. Let's name them all. Okay. There's Jerry and Barb and Al and Jack and and Stacy and well, they're gone now. <laughs> oh, that's. I feel like I just stepped into a sci-fi movie. The bugs of Omi Gardens. Omi Gardens, of course, isn't going to open this year, and that's a that's a big bummer for me. I love that place up there. Six minutes after the hour, hottest day of the year. Yeah, going to be the hottest day of the year. So far, we got to 91, and that was back on May 29th, and that was kind of an anomaly. We didn't get anywhere near 91 either before or after that. Until yesterday, when we got to 89, well, we're looking at 98, 99, maybe even 100 degrees today. It's a possibility. We're going to be the warmest spot. Normally out of the Columbia Basin, they're a couple of degrees warmer than us. Moses Lake's not going to quite get to where we want to be. But if you head down south, or where we're going to be, I should say, but if we head down south to the Tri-Cities area, they're looking at about 100 degrees. So yeah, will today be the hottest day so far in 2020? You can almost guarantee it with a, a high near 100 degrees today. Hey, it's summertime, it's what we expect, okay? So let's go ahead and do this in detail from Patriot Plumbing and Heating and Cooling, who gives your home a hug. Watch out for the van. Sunny and hot, temperatures today just about 100 degrees for the Wenatchee Valley, obviously slightly cooler in some locations towards the Lake uh, Wenatchee area, Plain, Leavenworth, and up in the Waterville Plateau. It's usually not nearly as warm up there as it will be down here on the valley floor, but it's going to be hot. Uh, 69 for the overnight low tonight. Now a weak cold front is going to pass starting early tomorrow. So on Wednesday, as you can see, we're going to cool down a little bit. We're going to go from 99 to about 90. The big story tomorrow is going to be a little on the breezy side at times. A northwest wind on Wednesday about 7 to 15 miles an hour, but we can see gusts near 20 miles an hour on Wednesday. And as you can see, cooler with, the, with this little weak cold front that's going to come through. Then we gradually warm back up on Thursday. Not very windy on Thursday. Strongest winds are expected really late Wednesday afternoon and Wednesday night. We'll keep a very close eye on that. It's going to dry out the grasses, dry out the sage, dry out the brush. We don't want that. Sunshine Thursday, we warm back up to 92. Friday, 94. Then the second cold front, and this one is a stronger cold front. It's going to uh, come in late Friday, and it's going to bring in some cooler temperatures and breezy conditions for the weekend. Uh, so uh, and that's going to happen Friday night. So again, Still very warm on Friday, but then Saturday is significantly cooler. Nothing but sunshine on Saturday and a high of 80. No wind in the forecast. In fact, downright pleasant, and that 80 degree mark is actually right out normal. So we're well above normal today, above normal on Wednesday, above normal Thursday and Friday. We cool down to right at the normal on Saturday. Sunday, mostly sunny, cooler, still with a high of 76 again. Uh, this, the cold front that's coming in tonight into Wednesday is weak, but the one that's coming in Friday into Saturday is packing considerably more punch. Maybe even a thunderstorm possible. We don't think so. Thunderstorms up in the Canadian Rockies and to the far east of us in the, the Idaho Panhandle and Western Montana. That is a possibility. But here in the Wenatchee Valley, I think we're going to skirt any kind of thunderstorms uh, as we get towards the weekend. So there you go. Hot weather today. By the way, the record high temperature on this state, let me look this up. I brought it up real quick. Give me a quick, quick second. Uh, 105 degrees is our record high on June 23rd. We're not going to get there, but it's going to be plenty warm for most folks. I hope you have air conditioning. You're going to need it. 10 minutes after the hour, going to take a break and come back with your Tuesday morning news. You're watching Wake Up Anachi Valley live this morning from Studio 7 in downtown Wenatchee on the NCW Live channel. Contractors, furniture makers, and weekend do-it-yourselfers around North Central Washington will tell you that Lombard's Hardwood Supply is the place to get what you need. Lombard's Full Mill Workshop can handle jobs large or small. Lombard's has a full line of interior and exterior doors available, as well as custom barn doors. From alderwood to zebra wood and everything in between, it's Lombard's Hardwood Supply on School Street, in Sunny Slope. Like us on Facebook and check out our monthly special.
No calories, no sweeteners, all smiles. Bubbly, sparkling water. Crack a smile. Seventy-one degrees our way to a high of ninety-nine, maybe even triple digits. Slightly cooler on Wednesday. We warm back up again Thursday and Friday. Then a significant cool down with a little wind at times coming up for the weekend. Here's your headlines: Two of the Wenatchee students assaulted by a fellow student athlete on a 2014 football bus trip have settled their long-running lawsuits with the Wenatchee School District. The family of one of the students who has since graduated will receive $85,000, the other family $40,000. The lawsuits were triggered by the Wenatchee High School football team's chartered bus trip to and from Spokane in September of 2014, during which a 14-year-old student assaulted multiple players and students under the guise of horseplay. He was initially charged with second-degree rape, but later pleaded guilty in juvenile court to third-degree assault. Now, the youth had been allowed to ride on the bus despite being ineligible to play football. At the time, he was also on court supervision for assaulting another student the previous school year. There was only one coach on that bus despite district guidelines that called for two or more supervisors. The families originally filed claims against the school district, school district for one and a half million dollars each. A third student's claim, by the way, against the school district is still going forward in the courts. A Wenatchee woman is in court fighting to keep her five-year-old daughter from being returned to the child's father in Saudi Arabia. Bethany Vieira Al-Hadari has struggled in the Saudi courts to retain custody amid her divorce from her Saudi husband. She's back living in Chelan County. She was in court Monday asking Judge Kristen Ferreira to maintain and enforce the child's residency here in the United States. Her lawyer, Scott Volan argued that because Saudi guardianship laws overwhelmingly favor Muslim men over non-Muslim women, the custody granted Vieira's husband in the Saudi courts should be struck down. A tribunal in Saudi Arabia dealing with child custody where the mother is an American citizen as is the child and the father is a Saudi citizen is hardly an impartial tribunal and the court has pointed out that were my client to return now that she would be subject to imprisonment and or death. Um, and, and there's a fair amount of information uh, consistent with that claim. Now, Bethany, uh, Bethany Vieira, who studied human rights as a PhD candidate before her marriage, also addressed the court. And it is not Sharia law or Islamic law in itself that is problematic, um, or is that question in this case. Um, there's countless diverse interpretations of Islamic law that exist. And some of those interpretations protect and uphold human rights, while some interpretations simply do not. Um, it is specifically the Saudi government's rigid and discriminatory interpretation and instrumentation of Islamic law that is dangerous in the question here. Your Honor, I am not alone in arguing that the male guardianship system and the kafada system, which is the system of sponsorship of foreigners in Saudi Arabia, are modern forms of slavery and that they are part and parcel of Saudi custody law. Saudi Arabia has made superficial reformations to male guardianship laws, but as Human Rights Watch has correctly asserted, these reformations have failed to address the core issues of gender discrimination, which remain fully intact at present. The mere notion that any modern form of slavery should be reformed in itself is offensive. It merits nothing more than being abolished and condemned now, Judge Ferreira said she considered the major points of the case, including a contempt of court request against Vieira's former husband at a later hearing. In the meantime, mother and daughter remain here in the Wenatchee Valley. A 22-year-old Quincy man was killed on Friday morning after a tire blew out on his 2003 Honda Accord while he was driving at a high rate of speed. This happened about five miles outside of Afreda. The Grant County Sheriff's Office says Augustine Gallegos, Jr., was driving on Road 9 Northwest near Road H Northwest when the tire blew. The car went off the roadway and rolled two and a half times before coming to rest on its top. He was not wearing a seatbelt, was ejected from the vehicle. Gallego died at the scene. The sheriff's office said it is not known yet if drugs or alcohol were a factor. An 84-year-old Moses Lake man was killed in a two-vehicle accident on Friday afternoon on Highway 17 just outside of Moses Lake. The Washington State Patrol said Delbert Chase 
was driving his 2009 Silverado pickup westbound just after noon on Road 2 when he failed to yield to the right of way, pulling onto Highway 17 and collided with a northbound semi being driven by 27 year old Trevor Renstrom of Garfield. Chase later died at Samaritan Hospital in Moses Lake. A passenger in his vehicle, 82 year old Jacqueline Chase, also was transported to the hospital with minor injuries. Renstrom was not. Injured. And finally, this morning, like a lot of other criminal cases since the COVID-19 pandemic began, the murder trial of Lance Robert Bowers has been on hold since he was charged in November with the death of his wife in Okanagan County. But now there's some movement in the case. Lawyers were scheduled yesterday to argue over whether to combine the murder of Angela M. Bowers with prior assault charges and illegal firearms possession. Angela Bowers' body was found in the trunk of a burning car back in June of 2019. That same day, Okanagan County Sheriff's deputies confronted Lance Bowers on Arenas Valley Road and non-fatally shot him while trying to make an arrest. He was held for months on the assault and handgun charges before his wife's body was identified. He was formerly arraigned for her murder at that time. Now, under court, current court rules on COVID-19, he's unlikely to go to trial before autumn. And that's headlines. At 17 minutes after the hour, Grant Olson's taking a well-deserved time off in this business. We call it assignment. Grant is on assignment. Jefferson Robbins is handling the anchor chair with a preview of tonight's news. Here's the man himself. Good morning, Dan. I'm in here all week for Grant Olson, who picked a beautiful week to take a little vacation. I'll be here this evening with all the news that you need, including all the updates on coronavirus, plus the one story nobody can stop talking about. It's the weather. That, weather, sports, you name it. We'll be here tonight. I'll see you then. Until then, try to stay cool. Dan? I will, Jefferson. Yeah, some people just talk about the weather, but here at the NCW Life Channel, we really talk about the weather. Get a hold of us if you uh, want to drop us a note. Let us know how we're doing. Maybe you have a news tip. You can go to our Facebook page. Drop us a line via Facebook Messenger. You can go to our website at ncwlife.com and drop us a line using the Contact Us icon, or you can email us directly, news at ncwlife.com. I'm going to take a break when we come back. Sports, the obscure holiday today in history. Some celebrity birthdays. Everyone is entitled to my magnolia's opinion. And we're going gardening with Bonnie Orr. You're watching Wake Up in Angie Valley on the NCW Life Channel. Hi, my name is Manuel Navarro, Chief Operating Officer at Columbia Valley Community Health. Patient safety is our top priority, including providing care that just can't wait. With enhanced safety precautions, we want to ensure you that we're able to continue providing safe and efficient in-person care at our clinic. From in-car check-in, ongoing screening, immediate rooming, your family can get the safe care that they deserve here at Columbia Valley Community Health. Pass along a smile today. Buy a box of chocolates for a friend or for yourself from Chocolat. Order online and pick up locally or Chocolat shifts almost anywhere. For your cheesy cravings, the Cheesemonger shop is open. Call ahead, stop in, or order online and they will ship. Everyone say Cheesemonger shop. Sage Mountain Natural Foods and Deli in Leavenworth is open for all your nutritional needs. Supplements, bulk foods, produce, and more. Call now for more information and hours of operation. We are back at 19 minutes after the hour. It's a good thing the Seahawks are deep at tight end because, well, rookie Colby Parkinson had foot surgery. It's going to be out for a while, two to three months perhaps. It was revealed on Monday that Parkinson underwent Jones fracture surgery back on June 2nd. That procedure generally involves the placement of plates or screws down the shaft of the fifth metatarsal bone. That does not sound pleasant. Other professional athletes have had this surgery. Kevin Durant, Paul Gasol, Des Bryant. Parkinson was a fourth-round draft pick out of Stanford in this year's draft. He was listed on the depth chart behind Greg Olson, Will Disley, and Jacob Hollister at tight end. Russell Wilson, part of a trio of Seattle sports athletes who hosted the SB Awards on Sunday night on ESPN. Wilson was joined by Megan Rapone of the world of soccer and Sue Bird in the world of basketball in a powerful opening scene. Jackie, Bill, Ali, Serena. Jackie rifled the shot into left field. Jackie Robinson went from playing in the Negro Leagues to becoming the first black man to play in Major League Baseball. 
at a time when segregation was still legal. Bill Russell, 11-time NBA champion, first black NBA head coach while playing, awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom because of his accomplishments in the Civil Rights Movement. I shook up the world. Now what are, what are they gonna say about that now, huh? Muhammad Ali, the GOAT, went against the establishment and stood for the freedom movement when it was the unpopular position to take. The day I stop fighting for equality will be the day I'm in my grave. Serena Williams has spent her life dominating the court, but it's her courage to speak against inequality and racism that cemented her as a voice of her generation. But what if we didn't know their names? What if they were never part of the conversation? And there's also this conversation. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Those were George Floyd's last words. Ahmaud Arbery was just going out for a run and never came home. Breonna Taylor was at home in bed. Our country's work is not anywhere close to done. We need justice. We need true leadership. We need a change, and we need it now. I look at my children, and I pray for a better future, a world where the color of their brown skin doesn't stop them from their calling, from their purpose, from their destiny. I pray for a world where I don't have to fear for my children due to systemic racism from hundreds of years of oppression. The only thing that must die is racism. Black lives matter. Of course, the ESPY Awards uh, on Sunday night were presented virtually for the first time because of the pandemic. One day after that noose was allegedly found in the garage of NASCAR's only black driver, Bubba Wallace, the race world responded in a big way yesterday. Prior to Monday's delayed start at Talladega in Alabama, all 39 other drivers and their crews marched down pit road, escorting Wallace's car in a show of solidarity. Bubba climbed out of his car, tears streaming down his face, took that selfie that you see there. Wallace didn't finish first, but he definitely won the race in a metaphysical sort of way. Speaking of racing, of course, we're pretty pumped about what's happening Saturday night here on the NCAA Life Channel. We'll be out at the Wenatchee Valley Super Oval broadcasting the inaugural race of the 2020 season. Now, of course, no fans are going to be allowed to attend, but we'll have wall-to-wall -wall coverage here on the NCAA Life Channel. Uh, the Wenatchee Valley Super Oval came out with the timetable for the week, and here's what it is. Friday's practice will run from 5 to 8 o'clock. Saturday's signing for crews begins at 2 o'clock. Practice at 4. Our coverage on the NCAA Live channel starts live at 6 o'clock, racing at 6.30. We'll have the race on TV. You can watch it as a stream on our website at ncablife.com, or you can watch it on our Facebook page. And finally, Major League Baseball owners have voted to implement a 60-game season. They did so yesterday, hours after the Major League Baseball Players Association rejected a 60-game proposal that would have included an expanded postseason. The season would begin around July 24th. Players would arrive at home stadiums for training camp, if you will, on July 1st. Players will also have to sign off on a health and safety protocol before baseball can resume. And that is sports at 24 minutes after the hour. Just one obscure holiday, but it's an important one, especially with the temperature, high temperature this afternoon near 100. It's National Hydration Day today. Very important to hydrate yourself. Your body is 90% water. You gotta keep pumping water in it. So this day was created to keep in mind that you got to stay hydrated, especially during the summer days. If you're dehydrated for a long period of time, you can get kidney stones, all kinds of other issues because of dehydration, especially if you're an athlete, if you're a very active person, even if you're out in the cool of the day, and today's about as cool as you can get, you can still get terribly dehydrated. So drink lots of water. Sports drinks is, of course, good for you. Um, you don't want dehydration. You just don't want it. It leads to all kinds of things that you don't want, like stuff coming out of your body where it's not supposed to be coming out of your body. Drink lots of water, especially to, well, you should do it all the time. It's National Hydration Day today. Water, not beer. Not a little beer. 25 minutes after the hour. Uh, 409 years ago today, there they go. That's Henry Hudson and his son and about seven loyal crew members. Here's what happened, of course, Henry Hudson, he was on his fourth voyage uh, on the bay that would eventually bear his name. Uh, November of the year prior, the ship uh, that he was in charge of, the Discovery, got lodged in the ice. 
the crew got off and they camped and they waited for the ice to break and it did uh, in May of uh, 18, uh, 1611. So Henry Hudson said, okay, let's go do some more exploring. And the crew said, no, we want to go home. We're done. And Henry said, come on, let's go see what else is around out here. And they said, no, we want to go home. They eventually mutinied. Uh, and so the mutineers put Henry Hudson, his son, and seven other loyal crew members on a tiny little open boat that you see there and set them adrift on Hudson Bay. They tried to row to keep up with the discovery, with the mutineers on the discovery. They didn't, they couldn't, they were never heard from again. By the way, once the crew returned to England, they weren't punished at all. Henry Hudson set adrift, never to be heard from again, 409 years ago today. I love baseball. One of the reasons I love baseball is that there's no clock, of course, in baseball. If games could last an hour, they could last two hours, three hours, nine hours, 39 years ago today, June 23rd, 1981. Dave Koza drives in Marty Barrett with a bases loaded single in the bottom of the 33rd inning to give Pawtucket a 3-2 win over Rochester, and it ended the longest game in baseball history. They had started on April 19th. They played eight hours and seven minutes and 32 innings. The game was suspended at a little after four o'clock in the morning. Then they picked the game back up on June 23rd of 1981. It only took 18 minutes to wrap up the game. The game's 14 pitchers went through 160 baseballs. There were 882 pitches thrown in this game. 195 putouts, 219 at bats, 33 innings, 283 total chances. It took eight hours and 25 minutes to play. The longest game ever finally came to an end 39 years ago today. 28 minutes after the hour, birthdays. Nobody really paid much attention to women's track and field uh, in this country until Wilma Rudolph came along. As a 20-year-old at the 1960 Rome Olympics, she won three gold medals. Wilma Rudolph was born in the state in 1940. She would have been 80 years old today, died of a, a brain tumor at the age of 54. She was the 20th of 22 siblings from her father's two marriages, and Wilma Rudolph, before the age of 12, suffered from polio, scarlet fever, and pneumonia. She survived and she would become the fastest woman in the world. Wilma Rudolph, a track and field legend, born in the state in 1940 and also born in the state in 1940. Stu Sutcliffe, a member of the Beatles. He was the bassist of the Beatles for just about a year and a half from May of 1960 to July of 1961. Uh, he played bass for the Beatles. He wasn't particularly good, but he was John Lennon's best friend. They shared a flat together in Liverpool and eventually to London. Stuart Sutcliffe was a rather accomplished artist and he sold one of his paintings. And ironically enough, the price for what he got for one of his paintings was exactly how much a bass guitar would cost. So John and Paul said, Stu, let's go to the music store, buy you a bass guitar, you join the Beatles, you play bass. And so that's what he did. He didn't know how to play the bass, but he bought a bass. He wanted to be a, in a rock and roll band because it helped his image. Stu Sutcliffe died of a brain hemorrhage at the age of 21. 29 minutes after the hour. Gonna take a break. Mike McNighty's got an opinion, then we're going gardening. It's summer gardening with the Dirt Diva. Everything you need to know to keep your yard and garden healthy and happy in the heat of summer with Bonnie Orr. When we come back, you're watching Wake Up in Nature Valley on the NCW Life Channel. The world around us is constantly changing. Major employers in North Central Washington have expressed a need for capable, qualified engineering technologists who can think critically and solve problems. And at Wenatchee Valley College, we listened. We are pleased to offer a Bachelor of Applied Science Engineering Technology degree to provide you with a world of new opportunities. Your time is now. The future is waiting for you.
At Local Myth Pizza, we believe in real food, freshly prepared with only premium ingredients. Our cheeses are imported from Italy. Our sauces, dressings, and even our sausages are made in-house fresh daily. Featuring Northwest craft beers and 30 Chelan Valley wines and ciders. Family fun and amazing food. Eat local, drink local, and be local at Local Myth Pizza. Come see why Sunset Magazine says you can't beat Local Myth Pizza. At Harvest Valley Pest Control, we know you are committed to making your home and business a healthy and pest-free place. Hi, I'm David. Give us a call and we'll give you a firm price over the phone and schedule a time that works for you. We will do an in-depth 30-point healthy home or business inspection and craft a customized plan of action designed specifically for your pest issue. Give us a call or visit our website today. I have a hereditary bone disease from my, the female side of my family. My bone loss was so significant that you could almost see the roots. I became embarrassed and I started covering my mouth. Eating became very difficult as far as I stopped eating apples, corn on the cob, things that you just eat as it is without utensils. Dr. Davis was my dentist prior to having implants. We talked about traditional dentures or implants, and implants was the only way really that I could go. John Divis and all of his office staff, they checked on me throughout all the processes. I would never go anyplace else. Today, I can eat corn on the cob. I can have apples. Thanks to Dr. John Divis and his staff, I have my smile back. I feel more confident. I am me again. This is John Divis. Let our team help you solve your dental needs. Mike Maddock Magnati, and everybody is entitled to my opinion. So my wife says to me, you need new clothes. There's a hole in these pants and there's stains on this shirt. Well, the hole is somewhere where no one can really see it, you know, and the stains really, unless you really look, yeah, you're not going to see them. And besides, I hate shopping. I'm not using the word hate here. So I tell myself to replace these clothes because of some minor imperfections is an environmental crime because of the unnecessary use of new resources needed to make new clothes that replace these old clothes that still have some utility. So I'm not a slob. I'm an environmentalist. Yeah. This is Mike Mad Dog Magnati, and that's my opinion. Water is essential to living. From clean drinking water for good health to clean water for your pool or spa. Central Washington Water, your water experts. With whole home water filtration systems for your home's best water. Products and supplies to keep your pool and spa water crystal clear to a full parts department. Count on Central Washington Water for expert help. Shop screen to screen. Come in or call about a backyard consultation. Central Washington Water, your water care professionals. It's estimated that one third of Americans do not have a financial plan. At DA Davidson, their advisors are working to change that because they understand the importance of planning for the future. At DA Davidson, they believe in partnering together to build a strategy tailored to your needs. They spend the time and have the knowledge to help keep your financial future on track. Let DA Davidson Financial Advisors of Wenatchee put the strength of advice to work for you. Hey folks, Carrie from Blueberry Hills in Manson. Remember the good old days? Sunday supper at Grandma's and the best recipes being passed down through generations? Well, come on out to Blueberry Hills and find amazing food with huge portions at family-friendly prices. From Benedict's to burgers to fresh fruit pies, there is something for everyone. Don't miss Blueberry Hills, where you pick, you sip, you eat, and you visit wildaboutberries.com. Is search engine optimization right for my business? Maybe. Studies show the first and second search results get 50% of all the clicks. But you have to fight national chains to get there. If the user has to scroll down to find you, tough luck. You could hide a dead body on page two and the whole zombie apocalypse on page three. Or you could spend less and get an ad in the Impact Big Print phone book, giving local businesses a chance to shine. Impact directories. Bigger print, better book.
summertime, the living is easy, the fish are jumping, the cotton is high, and if I say any more, we have to pay the estate of George and Ira Gershwin. I don't, I don't want to pay them any more money than I need to be. Dan Coons alongside my good friend, the dirt diva, uh, Bonnie Orr, who visits us four times a year on the equinoxes and the solstices, the summer solstice, uh, uh, June 20th, at what time exactly? You know. Oh, but I think it's an 8.30. 8.30 in the evening or morning? Uh, in the morning. In the morning. So Saturday the 20th, the first day of summer, longest day of the year. And as we always do with Bonnie, those four critical times of the year, get your garden into shape, get your yard into shape. It's the time to do it. In fact, right now, before we go any further, and I actually did some homework, Bonnie, um, because of this COVID-19 pandemic and people are, are, are locked home and there's stay safe, stay home, stay healthy uh, ordinances, Gardening is taking off. I oh, mean, people I are into it now. People, people's yards look wonderful this year. And you know, we're, we're in a yard here that has some terrific work to be done, but it will be very, very easy to get it back to where it's supposed to be. And we'll talk about what we're supposed to be doing at this time of year. And a lot of the people who are going to be watching this video are going to say, I have that plant, or I have that plant, <laughs> and I didn't know what to do with it. So it must make you feel, even though this is very difficult times for everybody, it must, must make you feel pretty good that people are tending to their yard and garden now more than ever before. That, yeah, I, 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 and too bad we aren't going to have the fairs for people to show off yeah. their flowers and their vegetables. <laughs> but you're right, I, I, yards and gardens have never looked better. Yeah, yeah. So where do you want to begin, young lady? Well, you know what, we are here on the, on, on the edge of this driveway, and a couple of things just pop out. One, it's time to do some pruning of different things. And of course, if you want to dry lavender, this is the time to pick it while it's still full of flowers on it. And then here is horsetail, okay? Mm -hmm. And this is just absolutely insidious, especially on the Chelan County um, side of the river. And um, this is the time to use some type of an herbicide, a glyphosate. You mean probably. polyglyphs not going to get the job done? No, because the roots go down about two feet. Wow. More so, more so than trees. Okay. And so you want to you want to paint it, and then what you want to do is come back in September because it's going to come back, paint it again. Next spring, paint it again, and you should be able to you should be able to wipe it out because it, it, it pulls easily i mean it comes right out of the ground but you're not really doing anything to the plant no and the, and the reason you do it in the fall is that the the herbicide is then taken down into those storage gotcha roots. gotcha so anyway so that's the first thing to to take care of right now in the, in the early summer let's go ahead and head to the backyard hey look at this beautiful lawn you know one of the things that's very interesting about this very large lawn is you can see that there's much shadow and much full light which means that this had better have a number of zones in it mm -hmm. because obviously it's not going to take the same amount of water. And I always worry about, about thatch. That's one of the things I want to look at. And the lawn has all of these little divots in it. So I, I dug. Mm -hmm. And... Oh, that's not nearly as wet as you think it would be. No, and this tells me that they are watering. And there's a layer of thatch. This thing could be thatched, okay, mm -hmm. because we're... This is that. This has not been thatched for a while. But the thing that worries me is that all the water is being held up in a, those dead roots. Look how dry it is. Yeah, that's bone dry. Th this is 10, this is uh, probably 10 minutes twice a day instead of doing the thing with the, the tuna cans, putting down mm -hmm. a half an inch at a time uh, twice a week at this time of year. But this lawn will begin to suffer as soon as it warms up in July. So, so is it too late to thatch at this point of the year, or well, you know, can you go it? Can still do most it? people don't like it thatched at this time of year because it looks awful, but also it's harder if the heat starts. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that what you want to do is thatch in September. So in the meantime, to this particular yard owner, it's a, it's a fairly healthy lawn. It needs thatching. What would you recommend? I, I would change the water practice. Okay. And remember the old tuna cans. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so until we get into the 90s, we need one inch a week to, mm -hmm. and in two applications. And people kind of shudder, go, oh, but it really works. What time of the day? Yes. Right. Any no, time no, wind. In, in no wind. No wind. No <laughs> wind. And and shortly after sunrise, correct? Right. Or or you know before eleven o'clock in the morning. I got you. Yeah. Where to, young lady? Okay, we're gonna look at some of the wonderful gro uh, growth in here. Let me pick up some tools. And now this is what I would call a mature garden. Yeah. Uh huh. And what's happened is that some things have gone rogue, and it looks like there is a filbert or a hazelnut tree and I think that that was the original plan but what's happened is we have snowberry that's come up our favorite 
a Virginia creeper, you right know, there. That, yep. that this is Virginia creeper here. Mm -hmm. And the um, Virginia creeper is, you know, the Ivy League schools, mm -hmm. they really don't have Ivy on the <laughs> They really have Virginia creeper. <laughs> and then um, Oregon grape. Now, the Oregon grape and the Virginia creeper are spread by birds generally, mm -hmm. you know. And in fact, there's some, I, I'm going to suspect that maybe that mountain ash tree also is that way. And here is a, a rose. Oh my gosh, the something has planted a walnut in there. And this rose has gone rogue also. These leaves, see how they're long and pointy? And these leaves are short and fat. These are the, no, that one there's the wrong leaf. Here it is, here. Mm -hmm. um, this is the original rose. And this is the below the rootstock. So I would suggest that this one has to have all of the all of the rogue stuff taken out. So this is salvageable. It's salvageable, it just needs but it needs big some time work. Haircut. And you can cut roses pretty much any time. Yeah, as we all know, if we've learned from Bonnie's previous episodes of Green Thumbs and Dirty Knees, these are hardy bushes. Hardy bushes. It takes a lot yeah. to kill a rose. This, and we should point out that where we're at now, this part of the yard gets a lot of sun mm -hmm. almost all day and quite a bit of water, which is why all of these plants and, have and, just and, taken off. And, and th th there's mildew here. and. That's because of the quite a bit of water. But mm -hmm. here's the thing about the mildew is that when it gets to be 90 degrees, it's gone. Mm -hmm. And mildew is only cosmetic. And so, you know, using a fungicide is really not necessary. Um, there's a really lovely other type of honeysuckle here. Uh, again, with, with a snowberry, which is a type of honeysuckle, actually. Uh -huh. So I think that, you know, sometimes you just get overwhelmed going, where do I start? Well, there is a, a lot going on here. And what you do is you take out all of the bad guys. And it looks better just taking out the bad guys, and then you can move on. And uh, many times people are afraid to attack these old roses like this. Mm -hmm. These roses have been whacked, and you can prune it at any time. And I think I would go in and I would take out all the dead material and uh, all of this type. Ah, you got me. That <laughs> type of thing. Then I would go in and cut off anything that is thinner than a pencil. Okay. Okay. This little guy looks like it's going to get crowded out you real know, quick. Like that's hydrangea. Okay. And I'm not sure why there's a hydrangea between these roses. And, and there's an also a, a walnut tree with it. Mm -hmm. So I think that what we have to do is just move that hydrangea to another open spot. And there are quite a bit of open spots. Yeah, there are. And anyway, these roses are not looking good right now, but they can be recaptured. This is Dainty Bess. This is one of my favorite little roses. It is really a beautiful rose. Oh my gosh, there's a cherry tree growing in the middle of it. <laughs> so, you know, everything will look better if we just get rid of the rogues. You know? And most of the rogues, there's a lot of birds on this property. Most of the rogues were planted via bird, bird or, or wind deposits or wind. Absolutely. Okay, and so this is the time to deadhead, okay? After things have finished blooming. Um, Forsythia lilac viburnum. This is the last week to do that because um, they're going to start setting their new blossoms for next year. And so when this is um, uh, deadheaded, what you want to do is, this is a peony, is go all the way down on the whole stem. Okay, take the whole stem out. And, and that way the plant then grows larger leaves. And they should be fertilized after they have finished blooming like that. To, again, to set for next year. And here's another... I think it's another, oh. <laughs> if this wasn't planted on purpose, it sure found a right spot, yeah, didn't it? Because there's it, nothing it, around it. looks here. like another type of honeysuckle. Mm -hmm. Look at these, look at this prize here. This is a yucca. And yuccas are not tidy plants. There's just no two ways about it, is there? No. And, I mean, you can, you know, pull out all the dead material. It's very difficult because they stick for a long time. And also they'll, sh they'll, shred your hands, so you have to make sure yeah, you wear sharp, gloves. Yeah, they're sharp, the sharp edges. Yeah, wear gloves. And these blooms are absolutely beautiful. They're large and white, and actually, in some cultures, they eat them. So just cleaning this up, you see, we've only walked a few feet, and we probably have an hour's worth of work so far. Again, we have the huge walnut trees, and they sh something or somebody has planted a number of them. This is, again, a problem with a mature garden. These uh, western red cedars, I think were planted as a like a little hedge. 
Mm -hmm. And then they didn't keep cu cutting them back. And because the things have grown so tremendously, you can see the lilac didn't bloom this year because it doesn't get enough light. And, and here's a forsythia that did bloom. And this is the time to do forsythia too. You can take up to a third of the old canes off. And each of those stems is called a cane because the flowers grow on the new growth. Here's a rose that's gone rogue again. It only is gonna bloom once and it has these floribunda type flowers, but it's down to rootstock. And, hmm, have a taste. Mmm, that tastes terrible. You know what it is? Uh, cotton for my mask. No, what is it? What, what would I be tasting if I didn't have my mask on? Your favorite plant. Oh, that's horseradish? That's horseradish. Oh, be darn. Yeah, yeah. Bring it on. <laughs> I love horseradish. I know you do. And that, as we transition to a, a small little vegetable garden here, Bonnie, <laughs> yes. that brings up a very interesting question. Is it too late to plant a vegetable garden, something that you can grow vegetables and eat and enjoy? No, because, you know, I always say that at the end of July, you plant your fall garden. Okay. You know, all of your root things, your beets and carrots and all sorts of wonderful things. Um, I think you can still get tomatoes going, and I'll tell you why, because the nights have been so cold this spring in the 50s, mm -hmm. so the tomatoes are just sitting there, just going, hmm. Now, this vegetable garden, this soil is fabulous. Mm. It has obviously been a vegetable garden for years and years and years, but what has happened? An oak tree has grown, okay? We're looking east again, There's and it is 9.30 in the morning, and there is no, there is no, no direct sun. No direct sun, and there's going to be some sun from the south. But then we have a ponderosa pine. We have this rose. Mm -hmm. We then we have uh, the fir tree. So there is not going to be a lot of sun in this garden. The direct sun is critically important. Six to eight hours directly on the ground. I would say this gets five. You know, there's a thing called a sun calc mm -hmm. that you can put this little dial out into your garden, and then it hooks up to the computer and it'll tell you, and so you don't have to guess about it. But this garden will not be a happy garden because it's not getting enough sun. That's and when you line. don't have happy plants, you have more of a chance of having all sorts of insect damage and uh, the things won't set and things like that. Here we have this, this really beautiful soil, and it, it looks like it's a fairly sandy soil, but it could, there could be some clay in it. Let's, yeah, there probably is some but it's really, it looks really nice. People buy a bag of fertilizer for, for, for $45 and they're gonna put it on the ground. But it could be that their soil doesn't need fertilizer. We, uh, it, uh, nitrogen would be the one thing that it would need in the garden. And so having a soil test done to find out what your level of nitrogen is means that your plants will grow more effectively. Because sometimes what happens, like with this tomato, people go, oh, you know what? I have a five foot tomato. And my only thought is, you're fertilizing too much because you don't want a five foot tomato. You want a three foot tomato with lots and lots of, bit of fruit on it. You can send in soil tests. There's a Cascade Analytic here in town. You can, uh, you can go online, mail them a sample and, and do that with other things. But also the same thing with a lawn. People buy expensive bags and many times the lawn does not need it. Mm -hmm. so, so that makes a difference. Here, this is a really interesting thing. So this is fir trees. And then there are mulberries, mulberry bushes growing in it. And again, the mulberries are not happy, even though they're quite large because they don't get enough sun. So they, they don't put out any fruit. I would cut the mulberries off totally. And with mulberries, you cut them and then you have to put, paint them with some type of a um, herbicide because they will sprout again. They, they're very, very difficult to kill. Here is a laurel, a laurel, which is supposed to be a little hedge which um, um, has... It's not a little hedge anymore. No, no, that, it, that's outlived its usefulness. And so taking that out, and then here's a Caria japonica, which is supposed to have bright yellow blossoms on it. And again, because it's growing in the wrong place, it is, it's not doing anything. So just taking out the things that don't belong. See, here's more Oregon grape. I don't know whether that belongs or doesn't belong. Um, depends on how open you want this to be. Here's a magnolia that did bloom mm -hmm. see there's see. A, yeah yep. yeah and then angelica on a nice little shady ground cover it's happy it's really really happy so anyway so this this yard says okay this time of year we want to do deadheading of flowering shrubs we want to make sure our water practice for the lawn is, is correct 
And um, rather than being overwhelmed by what to do, if you take out the rogues, the things you didn't plant, you'll be much happier. Uh, it's going to get hot. I know it's been a cooler and wetter than normal spring, but it's going to get hot and people have a tendency to kind of overdo it a little bit. Oh, it's 95 degrees. I'm going out with my hose and I'm soaking everything down. Not necessarily a very good idea, is it? Well, no, actually, believe it or not, it can lead to root rot. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> this little thing here, just carry these masks. <laughs> anyway, uh, leading to root rot, um, again, for your lawn, two inches a week when it's in the 90s. And you would have to, have, for these, for trees, you want at least eight inches of depth, maybe 12 inches in the water profile. So if we, if we dig down here, let's just see what the water profile is. Let's. What about here? And, yeah, just dig and see how, how Oop, whoops. I well, think I may have got a pipe there. I don't want to do that. Why <laughs> wouldn't that be great? This is yeah. really, really wet. Yeah, there's something yeah. there. That, oh, it's just a rock. But yeah, this that's very damp. It's very, very damp. Yeah. And again, almost no direct sunlight here. Very little yeah. at all in whatever it gets. It's late in the afternoon and then yeah. it's, it's being in shadow. So, so this one should have less water on it because that's really too wet. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can, I think you can almost um, bring water out of it. Yeah, yeah. 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 You know, bundly eyes are interesting because they can absolutely um, take over things and they can look really raggedy. And so if you do not want this to look like that, to look raggedy, you just cut it off in the spring okay. because the flowers come on the new growth and you can just literally shear it down and then start a whole new plant which will have flowers all around it in, a, in an attractive array rather than kind of out and about. Gotcha. Anyway, so so lots of work to be done at this time of year. Um, we're at the end of fertilizer. No more lawn fertilizer. No more plant fertilizer because plants don't want to have to grow vigorously while it's hot. Right. I understand yeah. completely. So, so we'll just have to see. It's good to see you. By the way, you. I miss you. Uh, any other general rule of thumbs for those people who are? Hey, all of a sudden I got all this time on my hands, and now I have a yard and a garden and I've never done anything in the summertime to maintain it. Start a compost pile. Perfect idea. <laughs> I mean, you know, read up on how to do composting because that's what makes all the difference in the world. And you know, mulching. I just cannot stress enough about mulching because you do not have to water as much. Like this bed that we were just in is heavily mulched from the fur uh, and, you know, from the needles. Mm -hmm. And so there's no evaporation there. And you can, you'll have to weed. You don't, that's the wonderful thing, you don't have to weed. All right, Bonnie, one last thing before we cut you loose. Well, we have, we have some, um, some fighting going on. Who is going to win this? Is this, this um, little spruce going to make it? Or is the vinca going to make it? Now, personally, I don't think that this looks bad. The vinca will bloom blue, and you have different textures and things. So this is an unusual use of these two plants but it's effective. Mm -hmm. But in order to be able to say, no, I only want one or the other, this is a total tear out. But anyway, this is, this is too much work. All the other things we've talked about today are easy jobs, you know? Mm -hmm. Just cutting out the stuff that, the rogue things that shouldn't be there will make the whole yard look more civilized. Any other, uh, any other advice for uh, either the seasoned veteran yard and garden person or the newcomer who have discovered the joys of a you beautiful to, backyard. You have to be out in your yard and enjoy it. You know, lots of people are only out on their lawns when they mow it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, walking around your yard every morning or every afternoon means that you are paying attention and you will not have huge infestations of insects if you are watching what's going on. Or you won't have all of these rogue plants coming up if you watch what's going on. So a walk around every day, cup of coffee in the morning, Glass of wine, Glass of wine in, the in the afternoon. afternoon. Why not, you know? Sure. Yeah, so enjoy your garden every day. Yeah, and it's so good to see Bonnie again, and I hate having to do it every, every four times a year. We need to do this more <laughs> often, Bonnie. Yes. There's no question about that. Bonnie Orr is the Dirt Diva. Happy summertime. Yes, happy summer. Everybody, and I guess I see you. Well, I'll see you before yeah. September. September. Whenever <laughs> it was. So, happy gardening, everybody. Dan Koontz, Bonnie Orr, you're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley. When you think of doghouse motorsports, you might think of motorcycles, but there's a lot more in this house. How about Honda power equipment from snowblowers to lawnmowers to generators and even water pumps? Honda is the brand that sets the standards. Perhaps you need an ATV or UTV. The doghouse has the largest selection anywhere. 
Did we mention watercraft and snowmobiles? And of course, we have motorcycles too. Back it up with terrific customer service and you have Wenatchee's best motorsports store five years running. Isn't it time for you to be in the doghouse? When you call Dick's Heating and Air Conditioning, you get 35 years of experience and customer service in the Wenatchee Valley. Dick's friendly staff strongly believe in repairing before replacing and service all major brands of HVAC units. Dick's Heating and Air Conditioning is your local independent trained comfort specialists, proudly serving all of North Central Washington. Call 884-6444 today. JDSA Law is a proud sponsor of these local sports broadcasts. They've been serving North Central and Eastern Washington since 1946. For over 70 years, their team of dedicated professionals has delivered quality, innovative legal services. JDSA Law partners with you to provide the finest legal advice and support as you navigate your personal and business challenges, risks, and accomplishments. At JDSA Law, they salute our local athletes and wish them well on another excellent season of competition. Coming home should never be a chore. Let Mary Maids of Wenatchee customize all your cleaning needs. Weekly, bi-weekly, special occasion. Do you have a vacation home that needs cleaning? We clean them too. Locally owned and operated, let Mary Maids do the cleaning while you focus on your family and friends. Mary Maids has special offers to fit your budget. Request your free cleaning estimate today. 509-663-1710. And we are back live here at Studio 9 in downtown Wenatchee. I'm Dan Coons. This is Wake Up Wenatchee Valley, 72 degrees outside of our studios. Here we go. We're going to climb that ladder. Is it going to be the hottest day of the year so far on this Tuesday? Yeah, pretty much guarantee it. We've gotten to 91 once. That happened way back on May 29th. And that was a bit of an anomaly. It got up to 91, but it wasn't close to 91 the day before or the day after. But 91 on May 29th has been our warmest day so far. We're looking at 98, 99, maybe even 100 degrees uh, today. Uh, dry, absolutely the hottest day of the year so far. So get ready. I hope you have air conditioning. I hope you have air conditioning because you're going to need it uh, today, really right through the rest of the week until we get to the weekend and a nice little cool down. Let's go ahead and give you your weather forecast in detail. And once again, Right around 98, 99, could even see 100. Our record high for this date is 105, set back in the summer of 1992 on June 23rd of 1993. We're not going to get that warm, but it's going to be plenty hot indeed. Our normal high for this time of the year is 80, so 99 today. I think we can safely call that hot. 69 for the overnight low tonight. Now, a weak cold front, and I mean a weak one, passes late tonight into Wednesday. It's going to cool us down about 10 degrees. It's still going to be plenty warm for most people. 90 our forecast high on Wednesday, but it's also going to be a little breezy, especially Wednesday afternoon. So obviously uh, we're keeping a close eye on the possibility of fire dangers, wildfire dangers, especially late Wednesday afternoon and Wednesday night because we are going to have some breezy conditions with a 60 degree mark for the overnight low. Done with the wind on Thursday, lots of sunshine and a high of 92, warmer still Friday, 94. And then Friday night into Saturday, a second cold front, this one packing a little more of a punch comes in Friday. It's going to usher in some cool temperatures. Uh, so we're going to go from 94 on Friday to only 80 degrees on Saturday. Lots of sunshine, no wind, just about perfect really for a lot of people on Saturday. 57 for the overnight low on Saturday night. Sunday cooler still with lots of sunshine. But again, this cool air is going to come in from the Gulf of Alaska uh, Friday night, which is why Saturday and Sunday look much more temperate for you outdoor people. And that's it for us. Have a good Tuesday. We'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.